Why is it so freaking cold out here? It's April. I think it's time to make a hot video. Hello, my YouTube friends. I have to say, I was starting to wonder if this day would ever come. It was two years ago, almost to the day, that I did this video on how to keep using Snap Camera after it shut down. And it does still work, by the way, but since then, I've been searching for any other solution. Animes had some promise, but it replaced the entire scene instead of dressing you up. It just wasn't the same. And Prism's phone app showed some promise, but you have to use your phone as a camera, and it's kind of difficult to implement. And that's really about it. I was starting to give up hope. But after two years, I finally found it a snap camera replacement made for live streamers. And it's totally free to use. I'm gonna show you how to use it today, so you know what? Let's get to it! The name of the app is StreamFog, and it's browser-based. There is a link in the description so you can go check it out for yourself. And since it's browser-based, there isn't much to install, but you do need to tweak your OBS shortcut just a bit. Let me show you how. So this is the StreamFog landing page, and we're going to log in. And you have to log in with Twitch, so if you don't have a Twitch account, it doesn't matter in using the software, but you have to have one, so just create one, they're free and then we're just gonna use our Twitch login. Now when you do this, it's gonna ask you to put in your password and all that stuff. I've already done that, and then you just have to give it permissions. So it automatically does it now, because I already put it in there, and you can see here's the, here's the information. But what we're gonna do is go into camera setup right here. We wanna select our input camera, whichever input camera you're using, select that one, and then your camera resolution. In order to get this installed, we have to go to the setup guide. And in the setup guide, we've got this little green text here. We're just gonna click it to copy it, and then we just have to modify our shortcut. So we're gonna right click on our OBS Studio shortcut, and we're gonna go to properties. And then right here, this is the normal shortcut. Yours is gonna probably have a different path than mine. Yours might be in program files. Mine's just in a different location. Then what we wanna do is paste what we just copied right here. So control V, we paste it in there. Just make sure that after the EXE, there is a space before the dash. That's all we need. Apply, okay. And now StreamFog is installed, or at least as much of an install as it needs. That's it, now it's gonna work. Let's dive into the software and I'll show you how to connect it to OBS and use the face filters. All right, so the next thing that we wanna do is click next and we're gonna click on this drag and drop piece right here and we're gonna go into OBS and we're just gonna click the plus and we're gonna go to browser. Let's go ahead and call this stream fog so we know what it is, click okay. And we're just gonna paste that in here. Now I think we're setting up, this is a 1920 by 1080. So I'm just gonna put this in at 1920 by 1080. And then you wanna control audio via OBS and click okay. And now, boom. But of course we have it set up in 4K and stream fog. So let's go and fix that. We're gonna go ahead and close this and we're just gonna hit that and settings applied. Now we should go back into OBS and there we go. So now we have it in OBS. And the first thing you probably notice is we don't have any microphone audio here. So when we set this up to bring in our audio via OBS, well, I'll show you what that's all about later, but we need to add our actual microphone in here because it doesn't carry over the camera mic. So we're gonna go up here. We're gonna go to audio input capture. We'll just call this mic. And what I'm gonna do is just drop this down and select my microphone right there. Click okay and boom. So now we have microphone audio plus right down there. We're gonna have the audio for any of the alerts or any of the voices or anything else like that that we set up. Now let's take a look at the faces because this is by far the best part. 
of course. So all we have to do is close out of this. The one we want to talk about right away is our AR lenses. So you could go through here and select any AR lens that you want to check out. And you could see there are a whole heck of a lot of cool lenses in here. We can go with something like the Demon. Now, if we select it, it doesn't do anything. But if we go ahead and we click this little plus button, it adds it to our dashboard. So now over here on the dashboard, we can have a whole collection of these and to select it you just click here and then when we go back into OBS there you can see it's working it it's awesome let's go ahead and split screen this real quick and now we can change all of these out and you can kind of get a look at what we're talking about so that's anime we've got an old man one right here I mean this is what snap camera was we've got the helmet right here this one is really detailed and it looks really good. You've got ones that will change your background like this. And then you've got ones like this where you get a green screen. I like this one. I think this one is really cool. We've got a mask. This is baby, which I use a lot. You can see up in the top right hand corner, this can actually be used in conjunction with voice mod. Of course, they have all of these AR lenses that you could choose from and they're all totally free so you could grab any one of these that you want now a lot of the standard ones that you would find in snap camera aren't necessarily here but you can submit lens ideas and they'll create the lenses that you're looking for you can also search through the lenses and they've got v2 beauty ones visual effects all kinds of very very cool stuff i mean come on this is exactly what i'm talking about We've been waiting for something to replace snap camera forever and we finally have it. I absolutely love it. Now you might be thinking, well, how do I use these or how do I automate them or integrate them into my live stream? Well, in order to do that, what we're going to do is go down here to integrations and we want this streamer bot integration, which allows you to hotkey all of these things. So you just download this and install the app. And let me show you what the app looks like right here. You just want to make sure if you go into your camera setup right here, you could grab your secret key. And then once you have this up, you just paste your secret key right here you save that key and now you can add hotkeys for anything that you have in your dashboard right here so what we could do is we can add a new hotkey to turn on our lenses let's add the one we just added the alienware right here and we'll do shift control a key and click submit you can now turn on this lens using the shift control a but it doesn't turn it off when you hit shift control a as well so what you need to do is you need to have a hotkey for your remove lens now the beautiful thing about the remove lens hotkey is that there's only one it will remove any lens that you have active so we just have to select a hotkey for it and we'll use control shift b and then submit our link now we have hotkeys to activate our alien lens and a hotkey to turn them off so now we could just add all of our ar lenses as hotkeys so we can go with apply lens and let's go with our helmet and we'll do shift control c and submit so now we've got two different lenses and now we can hit shift control a and boom alien comes up you could see a little powered by snap camera pops up down here in the bottom right but theoretically if you wanted to you can always crop that out it's not all that hard to get rid of if you wanted to and so you can now use any of these lenses with streamer bot or anything else to be activated by alerts or any kind of chat features that you have set up or you can just activate them yourself finally something that replaces snap camera they're always looking for new filter ideas so just click the button and ask in time this will be even better than snap camera if we all offer our feedback now there is a whole other part to stream fog that i haven't even shown you yet and this is really exciting they're called ar animations and there are a bunch of free ones based on all kinds of different games you can use them as alerts in Twitch and set them up right in your streaming app, or you can use them with any platform if you use StreamerBot. And that means they don't just have to be alerts, you can trigger them at any time for any reason. And you'll see why that could be fun in a minute. 
The best part is you can create your own. It's actually really easy, or you can commission the StreamFog team to create one for you. Let me show you how AR animations work, and I'll show you one that I created. It took like five minutes. All right, so I know, guys, this video is getting longer, but you definitely want to stick around for this, the AR animations. Let me show you what these do. We'll scroll down here to the AR animations, and we'll go ahead and just click on one of these, and you can see. Look at that. I mean, wow, really cool. They have all kinds of different ones. If we go into AR animations, you can see that they have ones based on all kinds of different games and that sort of stuff. So if you wanted to have alerts or just any kind of member things or something like that that was specifically rela related to any kind of game you play, well, those things exist in here. And all you have to do is select them and then add them to your thing. So I added a couple here like this one here, the firing hearts. And let me just show you what that looks like. And pretty cool. You can see right here now, there's audio to this that plays as well. So that's why you wanna make sure that you add the audio. Very cool. These can also be hot keyed. And there are extra features that go along with this. So if we go into our camera setup here and we click on advanced settings, first of all, you could see that you could change your frames per second. Secondly, you can set up a calibration image and that's for something a little different that we might talk about later. And then there's also this spotlight feature right here. Basically, it wants you to set your browser source in advanced and then you can highlight the scene when interesting things happen. And you'll understand why this is important in a second. Let's go ahead over into OBS. And what I'm gonna do is right click on here and go into properties. We'll scroll down to the bottom here and we're gonna change this from read access to OBS to advanced right there. And we'll click okay. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back in here and we're gonna right click and reload this page and then we can go down to advanced settings and you can see now we can turn this on and so you want to set your origin scene and your target scene basically let's say this is our origin scene right here this is the scene that we stream on mostly so our camera would be tiny down in the corner somewhere like this and we've got a game playing in the background. Let's load something up so we can simulate that and then we've got our second scene and this would be the scene where those AR animations play. So we're going to make our camera bigger like this. And I'm just going to go ahead and add that game in the background so you guys can kind of get the, get the effect, right? And then I did put on the move transition to make this look smoother. So now what we want to do is go in here and we want our origin scene to be this one right here. This is our normal scene. And we want our target scene to be scene two, this one right here. And so how this works is we just click one of these and it will play in the background. It will bring our camera to the forefront or spotlight it. And then when it's finished, it'll go ahead and transition us back to the other scene. So now there's a way when someone spends points or something to get one of these, they'll actually get to see it highlighted and then it'll flip back. And like I said, there are so many different animations here that you can choose, but it gets even better than that because we can go in here and we can upload our own custom one. So basically how these work is they have a video in the foreground, which would be in front of me and a video in the background which would be behind me. And so you can create your own animations using videos that use the back or the front or a combination of either one. And they're really simple to create. I created one in about five minutes. All I did was get a video of a bear walking and cut out the background, right? And then I just added that in as the background. So it looks like this. And it's totally silly and goofy. But the point is, I made that in about five minutes. 
You could easily make him come back the other way in front of me or whatever you wanted to do. Now there are so many big features in this that I haven't even covered yet, but this video is already too long. A lot of the ways that StreamFog is used is to animate your background. Wouldn't it be incredible to see Mr. Predator come alive? And that's the kind of things that you can do with this. But I don't have time to cover it here. So if you want to actually see me cover the rest of the features in Steamfog, you're going to want to let me know about it down in the comments. If I get a thousand comments that say, we want a second video, show us more, well, then I'll go ahead and make that video. Not only does this replace snap camera with some awesome face filters, but with AR animations, it takes it to the next level. I freaking love it. Now, not everything is rainbows and unicorns here. Every software has its flaws. The snap camera only face filters aren't here, and some of them don't have great alternatives yet. But that's what the submit lens idea is for. The other thing is having to add the camera into OBS as a browser source instead of being able to add it as a camera. Now on its face, this doesn't seem like a big issue, but when you run a complex stream, it means your guests can't see your camera because the guest software adds camera sources, not browser sources. And there are other drawbacks to adding the camera this way, but they can be overcome with some creativity. I just wish the app would create a camera source that you could add into OBS and other software. It would make StreamFog a lot easier and more universal to use in any platform, like Zoom. Anyway, that's my two cents, and to be honest, it's a really small complaint. StreamFog has finally given us a software that can replace Snap Camera for free, and I absolutely love it. But what do you think about StreamFog? Let me know down in the comments. And by the way, I'm sure they're going to be watching, so definitely let them know as well. And if you want to see how you can still use Snap Camera if you want to, even in 2025, check this video out. And if you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks to help make you a better live streamer or YouTuber, subscribe to the channel. My name is Michael Fire Jr. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.